Welcome to a narrated virtual tour of United States attack aircraft. The tour involves aircraft that I personally photographed or videoed, mostly at the Air Force, Navy, or Smithsonian Air Museums. Fighters used as ground attack aircraft and Navy nuclear bombers were not included. Entering service in 1936, Northrop's A-17 Nomad was a two-seat, single-engine ground attack airplane. It was armed with four 7.62 forward firing and one trainable rear machine gun and could carry over one ton of bombs fitted on four external racks and had an internal bomb bay that held up to 20 30-pound fragmentation bombs. The first Nomads had fixed landing gear, but the A-17A models had retractable landing gear and a more powerful engine. It became surplus in 1938 when the Air Corps decided that attack aircraft should be multi-engine, a requirement not followed with later attack aircraft. In June 1940, all but 20 A-17s were sold overseas. The displayed aircraft is the only A-17 known to exist. Introduced in 1941, the Douglas A-20 Havoc was a twin-engine attack aircraft that served Allied forces during World War II. It was armed with six forward-firing machine guns in the nose, two dorsal turret 50 caliber machine guns, one flexible 50 caliber machine gun mounted behind the bomb bay and could carry up to 4,000 pounds of bombs. On July 4, 1942, Havocs made their first European appearance flying low-altitude daylight bombing raids on Dutch airfields. In the Pacific, where flak was less intense, they were able to fly at low altitudes using their nose-mounted 50 caliber machine guns and internally carried bombs to inflict serious damage on Japanese shipping and airfields. When operating in formation, their heavy forward firepower overtook shipboard anti-aircraft defenses and at wave top levels they could skip bombs into transports and destroyers. Havox also served in the Middle East and North Africa and were eventually replaced by Douglas A-26 invaders. The displayed aircraft is painted representing Little Joe that flew 150 missions. The 1939 success of the Junkers Ju-87 Stuka dive bomber revealed a need for a similar aircraft for the U.S. Army. Introduced in 1941 as an interim solution, the Army adapted a variation of the Navy's Douglas SBD dive bomber, designating it the A-24 Banshee. It was armed with two forward-firing 50 caliber machine guns in the engine cowling, two flexible mounted 50 caliber machine guns in the rear, and had three hard points, one under each wing and one on the center line, carrying a typical load of one 500 or 1,000 pound bombs on the center line or a 1,000 pound bomb under each wing. Initial deployment to Java revealed that they had limited operational range, lacked appropriate firepower, and were vulnerable without fighter escorts. Despite these shortcomings, their attack at Bali damaged or sunk numerous ships. Upgraded A-24Bs fared much better at the Gilbert Islands, but by 1943, the Army moved from dedicated dive bombers to employing fighter bombers and medium bombers for close air support. The North American A-36A dive bomber was the first U.S. Army Air Force version of the Mustang officially developed for Britain in 1940. Ordnance included six 50 caliber machine guns, two in the engine cowling and two on each wing, and could carry up to 1,000 pounds of externally mounted bombs. Known as the Mustang or Apache or Invader, it first saw action over the Mediterranean island of Pantelleria in June 1943. During the Italian campaign, a-36 pilots flew bomber escort and strafing missions as well as ground support bombing attacks. 500 A-36s were built, 
but their service life was short as by 1944 its mission was being performed by Republic P-47 Thunderbolts and North American P-51 Mustangs. The displayed airplane represents the A-36A flown in the 522nd Fighter Bomber Squadron during combat in North Africa and Italy. Introduced in 1946, the Douglas A-1 Skyraider is a single-engine, single-seat ground attack aircraft. Armament began with two 20mm cannons installed on the wings that were later upgraded to four and included seven hardpoints on each wing and one centerline hardpoint capable of carrying up to 6,000 pounds of bombs, torpedoes, mine dispensers, unguided rockets, and gun pods. While the Korean War is known for the introduction of the jet age, Sky Raiders benefited from better range, longer loiter times, and a variety of ordnance when compared to their jet counterparts. Sky Raiders flew off the decks of carriers and from Marine Corps land bases during the Korean War. In addition to bombing missions, they also flew radar jamming and night strike missions. The Wachon Dam was struck by a flight of Sky Raiders with six Mark 13 torpedoes striking on or near the floodgates, blowing one away, wiping out electricity in the area. They continued their close air support service during the war in Vietnam, where their loitering ability enabled them to stay on station protecting down pilots until rescue helicopters arrived. Enemy improved anti-air capabilities led to their withdrawal from service later in the war. Introduced in 1948, the Martin A.M. Mahler answered a mid-World War II naval request for a single-seat monoplane combination dive and torpedo bomber. Its armament consisted of four 20mm cannons with 200 rounds per gun, two in each wing, and could operate with 4,500 pounds of bombs or torpedoes that were loaded on a centerline hardpoint, two center sections outer hardpoints, with six hardpoints on the outer section of each wing. Waller served in the U.S. Atlantic Fleet until being assigned to land-based service, replaced by the A-1 Sky Raider. It was retired from naval service in 1953, never seeing combat. The museum's Muller was retired from the Naval Air Reserve in 1955 and arrived at the museum in 1972. Douglas's A-4 Skyhawk, introduced in 1956, incorporated a small delta wing, eliminating the need for a heavy wing folding mechanism. This was one of many weight-saving design features that resulted in the Skyhawk bettering the maximum weight restriction by more than a half. Its armament consisted of two 20mm cannons, one in each wing, and could carry up to 8,200 pounds of missiles and or bombs on one centerline hardpoint and two hardpoints under each wing. Skyhawks participated in the Vietnam War's first strikes in response to reported attacks against American destroyers in the Tonkin Gulf in August 1964. In the skies over Vietnam, Skyhawks logged more combat missions than any other naval aircraft, with 195 carrier-based Skyhawks falling to enemy fire during the war. Between 1974 and 1986, A-4 Skyhawks were the featured aircraft in the Navy's Blue Angel Flight Demonstration Squadron. They were retired from the U.S. Navy in 2003. Introduced in 1963, Grumman's A-6 Intruder was an all-weather, carrier-based attack aircraft that could deliver payloads on enemy targets. Intruders had five hardpoints, one on the center line and two under each wing, capable of carrying 18,000 pounds of rockets, missiles, and bombs. It was the world's first all-weather attack aircraft that proved itself in Vietnam, carrying out night attacks with devastating accuracy that produced disproportionate results. Their low-altitude attacks encountered intense enemy ground fire, including surface-to-air missiles, resulting in around 84 being lost during the war. 
Some A6As had their ground attack equipment replaced with anti-radar systems and then were armed with anti-radiation missiles to attack enemy radars. Intruders also flew combat strikes over Libya, Lebanon, and Iraq. Navy and Marine Corps A6s logged more than 4,700 combat sorties during Operation Desert Storm, providing close air support, destroying enemy air defenses, attacking Iraqi naval units, and hitting strategic targets. The last A6 was retired from frontline service in 1997. Navy A-1s were transferred to the Air Force as two seats A-1E Sky Raiders in May 1964. Operated under the call sign Sandy, they supported search and rescue missions during the Vietnam War. Its extended loiter time and massive firepower offered pilots the ability to protect downed airmen for extended periods. This A-1H is painted as the proud American Sky Raider as it appeared when Captain Ronald Smith rescued a downed F-4 Phantom pilot near a North Vietnamese airfield for which he was awarded the Air Force Cross. This A-1E is the aircraft flown by Major Bernard Fisher for which he was awarded the Medal of Honor. He rescued a fellow pilot shot down over South Vietnam by landing in enemy territory under heavy fire and flying him to safety. This is believed to be the only surviving fixed-wing Medal of Honor aircraft. Introduced in 1967, Bell's AH-1 Cobra was the first purpose-built helicopter gunship to enter military service. Armament included either two 7.62 mm miniguns or two 40 mm grenade launchers, while each wing stub could carry seven or 19 shot 2.75 inch rockets, 7.62 mm minigun pods, or a 20 mm cannon pod. Later, anti tank missile support was added. It was the U.S. Army's attack helicopter from its debut in Vietnam until it was replaced by the AH-64 in the 1980s and 90s. In 1968, the U.S. Marine Corps ordered AH-1J Sea Cobras sporting a Gatling-style 20mm cannon and two engines for insurance while flying over water. Marine Sea Cobras flew combat sorties in the last chapter of the American experience in Vietnam, covering the evacuation of the U.S. Embassy in Saigon in April 1975. This Cobra flew 2,100 combat hours in Vietnam, including one mission where Captain Alan Butler held off enemy forces attempting to overrun South Vietnamese Marines, for which he received the Silver Star. Introduced in 1967, Cessna's A-37 Dragonfly was a variation of the T-37 Tweet Trainer, modified for close air support, forward air control, night attack, armed escort, and armed reconnaissance roles. Armament consisted of one 7.62mm minigun and a maximum 3,000 pounds of bombs, rockets, and or missiles mounted on eight hardpoints, four under each wing. 254 dragonflies were given to the South Vietnamese Air Force, replacing the A-1 Sky Raiders. A-37Bs served with the U.S. Air Force for only a short period. Some served with the Air Force Reserve and Air National Guards as observation flight attack aircraft until the last one was retired in 1992. The displayed aircraft is one of two prototype YAT-37Ds that were evaluated by the Air Force. Introduced in 1967, LTV's A-7 Corsair II was a carrier-based strike fighter developed as a successor to the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk. Its armament consisted of a two-barreled 20mm cannon with provisions for AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles and up to 10,000 pounds of rockets, missiles, and or bombs on eight hardpoints, four under each wing. A-7A's first combat missions were flown over North Vietnam in December 1967. 
Vietnam's high temperature and humidity diminished engine thrust to the extent that carrier catapult launches had Corsair II's operating at 4,000 pounds below rated maximum takeoff weight. It was part of the Navy's offensive firepower during Operation Linebacker Strikes and the aerial mining of North Vietnamese ports that occurred in 1972. Following the end of the Vietnam War, the A-70 remained a mainstay on carrier flight decks, called into combat action throughout the 1980s in Grenada, Lebanon, Libya, and Panama. Only two A-7E squadrons remained when Navy carriers launched their first strikes into Iraq and Kuwait as part of Operation Desert Storm in January 1991, marking the final deployment of the venerable Corsair II, whose beginning and end came in the face of enemy fire. The A-70 Corsair on display last flew operational off of the John F. Kennedy during Operation Desert Storm. Replacing the AC-47 Spooky, the Lockheed AC-130A Spectre is a C-130 converted to a gunship, primarily for low-level night attack against ground targets. It relies on visual targeting, so it employs various sensors, target acquisition systems, and infrared and low-light television systems. Initial armament consisted of two 7.62 mm miniguns plus two 20 mm and two 40 mm cannons. It arrived in Vietnam in 1967 flying missions over Laos and South Vietnam, seeing extensive and successful action against enemy forces during the war. After Vietnam, it saw action during Operation Urgent Fury in Grenada, followed by Operation Just Cause that removed General Manuel Noriega, a dictatorial de facto ruler who faced drug trafficking and money laundering charges in the U.S. During the Gulf War, Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm, regular Air Force and Air Force Reserve AC-130s provided close air support and force protection for ground forces and battlefield interdiction. The crew of this AC-130A Spectre gunship, named Azrael, Azrael in the Quran, is the angel of death who severs the soul from the body displayed courage and heroism during the closing hours of Operation Desert Storm. Azrael was sent to the El Java Highway between Kuwait City and Basra, Iraq to intercept convoys of tanks, trucks, buses, and car fleets fleeing the battle. Facing numerous enemy batteries of SA-6 and SA-8 surface-to-air missiles and 37mm and 57mm radar-guided anti-aircraft artillery, the crew attacked the enemy skillfully, inflicting significant damage on the convoys. The crew's heroic effort left much of the enemy's equipment destroyed or unserviceable, contributing to the defeat of the Iraqi forces. In 1967, the U.S. Army pressed the Air Force for a subsonic close air support fixed-wing aircraft to support its ground missions. The Air Force responded by ordering the LTV A-7D Corsair II, with one of the difference from the Navy Corsair IIs was changing the armament to a 20mm six-barrel Gatling gun. These aircraft perform sandy missions, providing air cover for combat search and rescue missions for downed pilots. Air Force Corsair IIs flew 12,928 combat sorties during the war with only six aircraft lost. The displayed aircraft was piloted by Major Colin A. Clark during a nine-hour rescue support mission of a downed F-105 crew for which he was awarded the Air Force Cross. Introduced in 1969, the McDonnell Douglas AV-8 Harrier features the unique ability to take off and land vertically, providing a quick response in close air support of ground troops. It is basically a British Harrier modified with American weapons and flight control systems.
Armament includes 125mm 5-barrel Gatling gun with 300 rounds of ammunition, six underwing pylons, and one centerline hardpoint holding up to 9,200 pounds of payloads of rockets, missiles, and bombs. During Operation Desert Storm, a total of 86 Harriers flew combat missions from both ship and shore, delivering over 5.95 million pounds of ordnance. Harriers also flew combat missions in support of Operation Allied Force, the sustained NATO air campaign against Kosovo in 1999, and continued to fly in support of operations in the global war on terror. It is expected to remain in service until 2029, despite the arrival of the Lockheed Martin F-35B. The museum's Harrier last flew off the amphibious assault ship Guadalcanal. Introduced in 1976, the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, unofficially known as the Warthog, was designed to fulfill the close air support role. Armament begins with one 30mm Gatlin gun, plus it carries 16,000 pounds of rockets, missiles, and bombs on 11 hardpoints, three under fuselage pylons, and four under each wing. It is very maneuverable at low speeds and operates at low altitude for accurate weapons delivery and includes systems and armor necessary for survival in this dangerous environment. It is particularly effective against tanks and other armored vehicles, but equally lethal to other ground targets. Their baptism under fire came during Operation Desert Storm, where A-10s flew over 15% of coalition sorties. Tanks proved to be the major target, with more than 900 Iraqi tanks destroyed, plus 2,000 military vehicles and 1,200 artillery pieces. Like the P-47 Thunderbolt, they can absorb tremendous damage and still return to base, plus they are easily repaired. After Desert Storm, they participated in Operation Deliberate Force, Operation Allied Force, Operation Anaconda, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and many more. The future of the Thunderbolt is cloudy, with predictions of the retirement ranging from 2029 to 2040. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour of many U.S. attack aircraft. If you would like to view similar tours on other aircrafts, please leave a note in the comment section. Links to similar tours will be added to the comment section as they become available. Here are links for similar videos that YouTube recommends.